finally here. Dark Souls 2 is out on PC, and this time with much better support for PC features compared to its predecessor. In this video, we'll see what the game looks like on a range of graphical settings. We'll also provide some recommendations for the computer hardware necessary to run at those settings, from the minimum requirements up to max settings at 4K resolution. Before we get started, please note that there are not yet benchmarks for the game available from major English-speaking sites, but there are enough user-reported data for us to comfortably give hardware suggestions. Also, first a note on the CPU and graphics card requirements. Dark Souls 2 is very light on the CPU, and even CPUs in the $100 range can play the game with 60 frames a second at maximum settings. In our recommendations, we'll suggest using progressively better CPUs paired with a better GPU, but that's because a PC should be balanced, and not because Dark Souls 2 needs it. And even at 1080p, Dark Souls 2 is not very demanding on graphics cards either. A GPU in the $100 range, like the R7250X, can still produce a smooth average frame rate of 50 frames a second. To get that up to 60 frames a second, you'll need something a little more powerful, like a GTX 750 Ti, which is what we recommend at our good tier at LogicalIncrements.com. Alright, so this is Dark Souls 2 running on the lowest possible settings at 720p resolution. You'll see some jagged edges and muddy textures, but honestly, this looks pretty good considering it's as low as the game's settings will go. Here are the official minimum hardware recommendations from the developer. They recommend a relatively low-end dual-core processor such as the X2555, or an E8500. They also recommend at least 2GB of RAM and video cards equivalent to a Radeon HD5870 or a GeForce 9600 GT. However, we believe the 5870 recommendation is a typo, as the 5870 is a much more powerful card than the 9600 GT. So instead, here's what we at Logical Increments are recommending as alternative specs that could easily run the game on minimum settings. We'd recommend a basic dual-core chip like the A6-5400K or a Celeron G1830, just 2GB of RAM, and a lower-end 1GB video card like a Radeon HD6570. These components are currently found on the minimum tier at LogicalIncrements.com, which is generally as low as we recommend for gaming. Here's another clip on low settings. The lighting looks nice, but notice there aren't any shadows. Also notice I did a terrible job avoiding that attack. Here's the same area on medium settings at 1080p. Note the shadows and improved textures. We'd expect a build at the current entry or modest tiers to handle Dark Souls 2 well enough for medium settings. That build might look something like this. We'd recommend a slightly better CPU, like a G3220, and a better 1GB video card, like a GTX 650 or an R7250X. You can probably still get by with just 2GB of RAM to run the game at medium, but we'll also go ahead and recommend 4GB to be on the safe side. Here's another look at the game on medium settings. The difference is less noticeable from the low settings outside the really dungeony areas. But let's take a look at that same area again on maximum settings. Note that there's just a little more detail to the enemies, the lighting, and the textures of the floors and ceilings. To guarantee running the game at a smooth 60 frames per second at maximum settings on 1080p, we're going to recommend builds starting around the very good tier, which looks something like this. For the CPU, we'd recommend something comparable to an i3-4130 or an X4-760K, 4GB of RAM, and a video card with 2GB of video RAM, like a GTX 750Ti or an R9-270. These specs are right around the baseline we'd recommend for running the game in a smooth 60 frames a second on all the highest settings. What about higher resolutions, such as 1440 or 4K? Here's what we'd recommend for achieving smooth frame rates at 2560 by 1440 resolution. Like we said before, the CPU is not going to be the bottleneck for this game, so an i3-4130 like we recommended in the previous build would still suffice here, but we're recommending a higher tier CPU like the i5-4430 to stay in line with a higher tier video card. You might want to consider upgrading to 8GB of RAM, and you want to boost your graphics card to something equivalent to a GTX 770 or an R9-280X. You might notice some stuttering now, because this is some footage of the game downsampled from 4K resolution. Even if you don't have a monitor with a resolution above 1080p, the mod called GDOSA2 will allow you to render the game in higher resolutions and downsample them to your monitor's resolution. Doing so provides even cleaner visuals, though it's really only going to run smoothly on really powerful builds. I should also note this footage has a nice bokeh effect thanks to that mod. Here's what we'd recommend for running the game at 60 frames a second at 4K resolution. We'd recommend a powerful processor like the i5-4670K, though again, the CPU is not going to be the bottleneck here. You will need a powerful graphics card, like the 3GB GTX 780 or a 4GB R9-290X. Well, that's about it. Uh, good luck staying human, everyone, and have fun with Dark Souls 2.